when we were collecting data that, you know, like when people are checking off the race box, that, you know, like I, I, my kids are half Vietnamese and half American mutt. And, you know, like they get put in this other bucket because they're checking multiple boxes. And so that's different. Like the level of granularity that we need to collect the data is, to make linkage possible is really hard to do. I think that speaks to why we all have to figure this out together because you're very concerned about making, taking a look at the actual data. And then we have Census Bureau here who's collecting the data. And then we are worried about people having um, their privacy preserved. You know? and, and so like, how do we build greater trust mm. in the underlying data and what we do with it? Um, we hope that that trust gets built with privacy preserving record linkage technology but at the same time, it's like this cart or horse thing where we actually do have to collect it at that granular level in order to make it work. Um, so I don't know, Chris, I, you know, you've spent a lot of time doing this. <laughs> and so I would love to hear from you some thoughts about your strategies for, you know, as we move forward. Um, how can we build better trust in how um, research as well as the government and private industry is going to be able to maintain people's privacy? Maintaining privacy right now is, you know, very difficult. I will venture to say everyone in this room has received a letter in the mail telling them that some of their data is out in the public domain now. Like, no one is safe, and, and the governments aren't either. They're doing everything they can to protect the data. But I think we can build, start to build trust over these, explaining transparency around how we are going to link their data we go to a lot of trouble to get consent to do it, but we don't really tell people how we're going to do it, right? And I think that having them know that it's machine learning, computers, bringing together data in a, in a way that doesn't reveal their identity to anybody working with the data is important. Um, there are also efforts, I think Amy may have mentioned, um, there are efforts going on now, whether people like it or not, to develop synthetic data products that are based on linked data, because linked data inherently carry more risk for re-identification. It's two sources of data. Neither person controls access to both sources. And so um, we, you know, we end up making a lot of linked data restricted use, which <laughs> carries a accessibility barrier, no matter what. And so the agencies are thinking about how to overcome that barrier in some ways and are developing synthetic data files along with the required verification or validation systems that have to come with synthetic data because you can't just put made up data out that is modeled, but um, you can't just put it out there and say, go for it. You need a way for people to check that their work with synthetic data rep resembles the true data that they um, are not getting access to, or can in turn, if they are not getting verifiable data from the synthetic models, they know where they have to go to do their research. Mm 